hello, we are 15 days into the Kickstarter campaign, which means we have 15 more days to fund this novel. We're getting close to like being halfway funded. So if you want it to happen, you gotta help me out here. Because if we don't reach the final goal, it's not coming out. But we have a good chance. We're doing well. Let's keep at it. If you haven't supported it already and you've been considering it, maybe it's time to go at it. Um, and for today's OC story time, I'm going to talk to you about Chris Licola, who I have mentioned in my previous video about Rogue Row, which you should probably listen to because it's about the main character. This is more of like a side character. So Chris, Chris for short, Chris is Rose's girlfriend. And in honor of Mermay, which starts tomorrow, I thought it'd be good to like talk about her because at some point she does become a mermaid. Quite, quite spoilery. I know she spends most of the book as a mermaid though, so I don't feel so bad about this. Chris is like kind of very opposite to Ro as a person, which I think is kind of clear from my last video, where she's like really into like magic and like mysticism. She's very spiritual. She goes to like a spiritual kind of church thing. She tries to talk to ghosts and spirits through like seances. She believes in like healing magic and all of that sort of stuff and this is very very different to Ro who doesn't even want to partake in like pretending it exists like he doesn't even want to like consider reading a fantasy book like she has no trouble with that sort of stuff and you think that would cause a lot of trouble in the relationship and it does but it doesn't cause as much as you would expect mostly because Ro is kind of dry like he's not angry about this thing he just he just doesn't like it and he's kind of hard to rile up about anything mainly due to his lack of a heart and there's like some conflict in their relationship, but it definitely mostly comes down to Ro and his heartlessness. But for the most part, like Chris has his back and is really wants him to like get better. Like she doesn't know that his like actual heart is missing. She knows that he has health problems and she's like always ready to like call the doctor and get him medication if he needs it. Like she's like super supportive and she really likes him. Why does she like him? It, it's it's not so clear at like the very first chapter, but I think it's sort of like he's funny and he is sweet. And, like, there, there are moments where he he really does care. Like, he doesn't want anything bad to happen to her, even though he doesn't behave the best all of the time. Like, he's a work in progress, and she can kind of respect that from him, I guess, <laughs> is the way. Also, he's, like, sassy, and that's fun. And he's sweet, s secretly, whatever. <laughs> but yeah, she's really into, like, magic and stuff. Like, she believes in ghosts. And she believes in, like, this, the afterworld. And so, like, she does, like, her little seance. And she gets a glimpse of Ro's mother, who is dying at the time of, like, the uh, seance that she holds. And so when she finds out that Ro's mom has passed away, she is very insistent that he goes to the funeral. Like, Ro wants to just avoid it, because, like, that's how Ro deals with problems. You have a problem, you just avoid it. You run away. You head in the opposite direction of danger. Very good idea, right? Well, no, not according to Chris. Chris wants him to go to the funeral so that he has a chance to, like, let go of his mother's spirits because she believes that if we in like the mortal realm or whatever hold on to a ghost um hold on to a loved one and don't say goodbye then they can like become a ghost and they never f fully feel finished in this world and like you need to let them go so she wants him for his sake as well to go to the funeral so eventually she does convince him to go back to Cherrywood his hometown and back to Honeywall's his mother's and his house when he was growing up and initially he kind of wants to go 
it alone, but Chris also has concerns about his health in general because he has no like heart like it affects his emotions because this is like a magical like missing heart sort of situation but he also has like actual physical heart problems and with his mom dying he starts to like have more of these problems and she's concerned about him driving a long way so she refuses to let him drive to Cherrywood and she tags along with him and together they go to the funeral which you know I'll just brush over I don't want to spoil too much of like what goes down there and they go to Cherrywood they go to the funeral Rose sees like his mom off and the barrier and all that such and so on stuff I guess and eventually Ro goes, talks to his sister, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so this is a little bit of spoilers. It's mentioned in the synopsis for the Kickstarter, like as sort of like a hint at what the greater story will become. So it's not super spoilery, but like you might want to duck out and just go support the Kickstarter if you want to find out for yourself. But yeah, so what ends up happening is that Ro gives away all of his mother's stories to his sister Sundu, and this does not go well for him. What eventually ends up happening is that his sister uses his mother's stories to ruin his life, and one of the ways that she does this is by turning Chris into a mermaid. When they come back from visiting Cherrywood, Chris really wants to do a sermon at her church. So she goes up, does the sermon, and during this sermon she gets really, really sick all of a sudden. And so an ambulance needs to be called, and she ends up passing away in the hospital. And the next day, Ro comes back, and she is back, but his house is now flooded, and she is also a mermaid now, which is kind of the start of like his whole adventure thing, is to fix this whole thing that has happened um, with his whole city being flooded and she being a mermaid. And like, no one really like is super aware of what's going on, except for Ro, because Ro is able to see these kind of like fantasy elements unlike the rest of the world who is not so perceptive to it like he can see the craft feather crow not as a normal crow and he's able to see his girlfriend and this ocean that no one else can see that has flooded the world like that's where his adventure sort of happens and it becomes clear to him that the only way that he will be able to possibly fix Chris is to find a heart because um, his love could possibly bring her back. And Ro has always been very self-conscious about his love for Chris. Like, it, it's sort of like to be expected, like, especially during the first chapter. It's like, what is this guy doing with such a fanciful lady like she loves magic she loves she she loves like fantasy she loves she believes in all of the spiritual stuff and he doesn't believe in any of it like it feels like they shouldn't be together at all and Ro definitely feels that sometimes too he feels like one he's not into the sort of things that she is and maybe he's just a bad person and should just leave and also he feels like he can't possibly love her because deep down he is aware of his heart thing and is worried that without a heart he could never truly love her. And so he decides for whatever reason th th there's stuff that leads up to this that he needs to go find a heart and save his girl. And yeah, um, mermaids are really cool. It's mermaid as this title should suggest, and I was like, let's talk about our mermaid. I hope it wasn't too spoilery. Chris is just a lovely lady, and she's totally a mermaid. She's got, like, the mermaid vibes in her heart and in her soul. <laughs> a lot of stuff in this is kind of based around, like, storybooks and things, so I just felt like mermaids fit. Also, mermaids are cute. So, on the weekend, for our regular story, Saturday stream. We're gonna do some mermaid drawings, so you can look forward to that, and maybe we'll draw people's characters as mermaids if they pledge to the Kickstarter. And like I said, if you haven't pledged to the Kickstarter already, 
please consider do doing so. Really would help us out. We're a little under halfway there as far as funds go, so I believe in you. <laughs> oh, and and one more thing. If you like this drawing here, we still have three spots left um, for the watercolor illustrations. They're all being sold as like the highest tier of the Kickstarter, so you can get the book and one of these four lovely drawings. We have the row one and we have a Claire one, and now we have a Chris one, and we have one more that we'll be drawing, that Ursula will be drawing on on the last day of the campaign, so keep your eyes out for that. Maybe all the ones that don't get sold will be put into a fire to keep me warm in this freezing basement. Okay, I need to stop recording. I have like the worst headache. It feels like there is a nail in my skull. So I'm going to stop and I'm going to go edit this. Thank you for watching.